So this is the GM part that I'm gonna to use to make this Mustang even slower. This is a four piston Brembo caliper from a Cadillac ATS. Um, I believe it's like a 2015 Cadillac ATS. And if you use the correct adapters, this will bolt right to the spindle on this car. No cutting, no grinding, no real permanent modification. The calipers are relatively cheap. You can get the calipers for less than 130 bucks a piece, brand new, no core charge, none of that crap. Um, it's really comparable in price to the 13 inch Cobra, factory Cobra setup because the, uh, by the time you add in the core charges on that, you're gonna be $100 into those calipers and those are two piston calipers compared to a four piston caliper. So like I said, this will bolt on a SN95 knuckle without virtually any real modification to the car. Now you do have to do some modification to the caliper itself. So what I have here are a set of offset bushings for these holes. So I'm gonna press out uh, these two factory inserts in the caliper, push in these offset inserts from SNS Engineering. Um, you can contact them on Facebook. I'll have a link to them down in the description. Um, they supply obviously the adapters, new hardware, and then they give you a spacer to put behind the rotor just to push the rotor out a little bit and what that'll do is that'll center up the rotor in between the, uh, the caliper like it's supposed to be. So for any of you wondering what rotor you're supposed to use with this kit, it's going to be a 13 inch Cobra rotor. Um, I actually scored these two piece rotors on eBay for about 250 bucks brand new in the box from DBA but any standard Cobra rotor 13 inch uh, 94 to 04 works with this setup. So this is a factory Ford four piston brake setup for the front of one of these Mustangs. It runs you about 1400 bucks plus tax and shipping and whatever. So you're going to save roughly a thousand dollars by using these ATS brakes versus buying this kit off the shelf from Ford. Um, there are some differences in the calipers and the brake bias on the ATS caliper is a little more front oriented than the Cobra R setup, but we're gonna go over some stuff later on in the video that is gonna help you correct that brake bias and give you an OE 70 front, 30 rear brake bias. With that, let's get started putting these calipers on. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is gonna be push out the two bushings. So the way I'm doing this, I've just got an anti-fatigue mat down on the floor and you're gonna take a 14 millimeter bolt and just thread this in and just hit the top of that 14 millimeter bolt with a hammer and it'll push that um, that insert right out of there. You can put a block of wood or something, whatever you guys need to do to keep from marring the caliper up. Um, for me, this is the quickest and easiest option. Um, if you guys are looking for a 14 millimeter bolt, if you own a 99 to 04 Mustang, the lower rear control arm bolts are 14 millimeter. They'll thread right into these inserts and then you can use that to push the old inserts out. So it's pretty easy to see already how this is gonna work. So this insert is gonna sit in there something like that and you're just gonna press that in to the existing hole in the caliper. Um, before you do that though, if you look here, there is a lip on the inside of the caliper that you have to grind away at this lip just a little bit because the bolt that you're gonna put through here isn't gonna go directly in the center of the hole. The hole, the bolt is gonna be offset in the hole. So you have to grind this edge just a little bit to, uh, to clear the bolt. So what I'm using to grind away at this caliper, I'm just using a rat tail file. Um, I do have a pneumatic die grinder that I can get in here and you know grind out this material with that. I really didn't think it was much faster than you know doing it this way and obviously you have a lot more control with the rat tail file than what you do with a pneumatic die grinder so use what you have at your disposal but uh, when you lay these inserts in here you can kind of tell where you're gonna have to file away and remove material so what we're gonna take a look at now is the orientation that the inserts need to be in in order to press them in and have the caliper fit the car so if you look at these inserts, there's multiple marks in these inserts. You're only gonna use two of the four marks that are in the insert at any given point. 
what they do is SNS engineering marks every one of these inserts that you could use it in the top or the bottom of every caliper. So there's a bunch of marks on these things. You only need two of the four. So the ones I have highlighted in black with a Sharpie, those are the two that you'd need at any given point. So the one at 12 o'clock is gonna line up with the boss on the caliper, and that is gonna make the one on the far left or the far right, depending on what bushing you're pushing in, that's gonna put that one at either nine or three o'clock. So when I flip over and look at the other picture, you can see that this insert is orient orientated the exact same way. The inserts are set up so you can use them in any position, but there's only certain marks are used in certain positions. So this is when it gets a little confusing and worst case scenario, you screw it up and you press it out and try it again. Not the end of the world. So to push these bushings in, I'm using my gigantic bench vise. Um, I understand not everybody has one of these, but what SNS recommends is actually just a large C clamp. I tried a large C clamp. The bench vise was just a heck of a lot easier. Um, if you have a hydraulic press, hydraulic press would 100% work. Um, they say a C clamp will work. It wasn't easy, but I'm sure in a pinch you could get it done with that. So I'm taking the hardware from the kit and I'm putting the caliper on the car with no rotor. Um, the reason I'm doing this is first of all, making sure everything fits. And second of all, if you see there's holes in these inserts and what these holes are for is actually for a roll pin. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a drill bit, drill down into the end of the caliper, put a roll pin between the caliper and the insert so the insert doesn't spin. So I spoke with SNS before I put out this video and they have actually made some changes to these kits. So they are no longer requiring roll pins in these kits. Um, the holes for the roll pins will be in the bushings and you have that option to put the roll pins in if you want. Um, they actually use that hole for fixturing purposes as far as machining the bushings. So there will be holes in the bushings that you get, but they've tightened up the tolerance between the bushing and the caliper so the press fit is tighter. So you do not need to pin it anymore according to SNS. That is up to you. Okay, so I've got everything painted. I'm gonna go ahead and do final assembly. So get your rotor spacer, get your rotor, put that in place. After that, we can bolt up the caliper. And you're gonna use the hardware um, that comes with the, the SNS engineering kit. And you're just gonna to torque that to you know the factory spec. I think it's like 89 foot pounds on uh, the two caliper bolts. So as far as the pads, um, the pads that I'm using on this setup are actually the same pad that's used on uh, the track pack Brembo cars, the S197 track pack Brembos, um, the modern Camaros, some of the, the Corvettes, uh, Ford GT, all use this exact same pad. It is a super common pad. I mean, you could get pads I think as cheap as like 10 or 12 bucks for these, uh, for these calipers. Um, as far as installing them, you, as you can see, you know they slide in from the top, and then there's a couple pins that go through the ears on the uh, on the pad, and then just you know pin the pads in place. It's pretty common for all the uh, you know four piston brake setups to be done something similar to this. But as far as pads, they are extremely common. Um, like I said, you can use them uh, later model Mustang, Camaro. You can use them off the ATS, obviously. It's the same pad as the ATS, but the ATS uses the same pad as the rest of those cars I mentioned previous. So pads are easy to find. Um, the rotor is a stock Cobra rotor, 13 inch, uh, 94 to 04. Super easy to find that as well. So replacement parts for what you have here is super easy to come by. You can get it at a local auto parts store, no problem. So the banjo bolt that you're gonna use is the stock 
fine thread Ford banjo bolt from Cobra Brakes. So I'll put a link to that banjo bolt in the description. Um, the lines that I'm using, I'm gonna hook this up because it's dripping all over the place. Um, the lines that I'm using are made by Russell and they work fantastic. They, they don't have any problem. It's just the stock, um, obviously it's a braided line, but it's made just like the stock uh, Cobra line. So this is about as bolt-in as it gets as far as a uh, you know break upgrade. No cutting, no grinding, um, no BS, and you know what? It's cheap. So now we're gonna talk about something that nobody ever talks about when they do this ATS front brake upgrade. They never talk about what you have to do to the rear to keep the brake bias the same. So what I mean by brake bias is 70% of your braking on one of these Mustangs is done by the front wheels, 30% is done by the rear. You wanna keep that at that 70-30 split so you have good control, good traction, minimum stopping distance. You wanna keep it at 70-30 as much as you can. Well, you just added a bunch of clamping power to the front of the car, so you have to add additional clamping power to the rear of the car to offset, you know, and keep that 70-30 balance. Nobody in any of these videos on these ATS brakes has ever spoken about this. This caliper is not for a Mustang. This caliper is for a Ford Taurus, like a mid-90s Ford Taurus. If you look at this number by my finger there, it's 43. That is the size of the piston in this caliper. The stock Mustang caliper has a 38 millimeter piston in it. So because the piston in this caliper is bigger, it provides more clamping force. And with the front upgrade combined with a 11 and a half inch Cobra rotor and the Taurus caliper, it keeps the stock brake bias. It's within a half a percent of the stock brake bias front to rear. So if you're gonna do the front, you have to come back and upgrade the rear to the Taurus 43 millimeter rear caliper. I'll have a link to these in the description as well. If you are running stock front brakes, don't put Taurus calipers on the rear looking for an upgrade because then you're gonna have too much rear bias and there's a potential that the rear wheels would lock up before the front wheels causing a control problem. So. This caliper only goes with the ATS front brakes. So in regards to that Taurus rear caliper, the Taurus rear caliper, literally, you can bolt it into the Mustang caliper bracket. You can use the Mustang pads. It's literally just a drop-in replacement for the Mustang rear caliper. The emergency brake works like it's supposed to. It's identical other than the size of the piston in that, uh, in that caliper. So it is a good upgrade if you're gonna run these on the fronts, you know, just to get your bias, you know, straightened back out. As far as wheels, there's certain wheels that you have to use to be able to clear these brakes, obviously. They're, the calipers on the front of this thing are huge. Um, so 2000 Cobra R wheels should clear it. Um, FR500 wheels, most of them, from what I understand, will clear them. Mine obviously do. Um, 03 Cobra wheels will clear these brakes. 98 Cobra wheels will clear these brakes. Um, I'm sure there's other ones out there, but those are the kind of the common ones that you see. Um, any of the standard stuff, like any of the Mach 1 bullet wheels, um, anything like that, probably aren't gonna clear these without a large spacer, probably like a quarter inch spacer. Um, that kind of leads me into my next point is gonna be spare tire. So I'm looking at a spare tire fitment for this car. Um, I have a lead on what I'm gonna use. It's gonna fit in the trunk just like the stock spare, and it's gonna be around the same cost as you know the 17 inch Cobra uh, spare wheel and tire that you know those are 20 years old at this point, and who wants to drive around on a 20 year old tire? I'm looking into that. It's actually a, like a front drag wheel um, with just a temporary spare on it. So about these front calipers, these front calipers, I gotta write it down because I can't keep it straight. Um, they have four 42 millimeter pistons in, in this caliper. So the Cobra R setup that Ford sells has 
a thir two 36 millimeter pistons and two 40 millimeter pistons. So this has more bite than the Cobra R setup. So that is why you have to put the Taurus caliper on the rear to get more clamping power on the rear because you have more clamping power on the front. If you buy the Ford Racing Cobra R setup, your brake bias is gonna be the same as it was stock. That is the difference. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of what you're paying that premium for. But as you can see, you know, there's ways around it. Uh, so total investment here, guys, I came up with a figure of about 590 bucks. That is calipers at 250, the bushing inserts at 175, uh, pads you can get, I found them as low as 13 bucks for front pads. Uh, the Taurus calipers in the rear were 84, and that's with the core charge. You know, you get money back if you give them your, your old Mustang calipers. And then the two rotors for the front of the car, if you have to replace them at 68 bucks. The total on that's 590 bucks. So you can get a four piston brake setup on the front of one of these cars with the upgraded Taurus caliper for less than 600 bucks. So when you compare that to the one that Ford Racing sells at 1400, it's a pretty good deal. Um, as far as how it drives, I've only put about 25 miles on the car at this point. So I don't have, I have some initial impressions, but as far as any long-term, like how does this work sort of thing, I don't have any of that information. Um, initial impressions is the brake pedal is a little bit softer than what it was with the Cobra caliper, just because I'm filling so much more volume with these calipers and the rear. So the, I have a little bit more brake travel than what I normally did before. Um, with that said, it's not excessive by any means. As far as you know, pedal feel and things like that, it feels pretty average. It actually feels much better than like a standard stock F-150, any one of the modern ones, if you guys have any of those. Um, the pedal feels much crisp, crisper than those, but it's not nearly as crisp as what it was with the PBR Cobra setup. All in all guys, it's a great upgrade. I'm sure a bunch of you out there are going, well, you know, how much quicker does it stop? And you know, things like that. But the, the reality of the situation is, believe it or not, brakes don't really control stopping distance as much as you think. Um, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is if you stomp on your brake pedal and the ABS kicks in and the brake pedal starts pulsing, the tire has lost contact with the road the brakes are not the limiting factor in that scenario. If you're able to lock up the brakes, putting on bigger brakes isn't gonna help. So really to get the most out of this setup, you need a grippy set of tires, aggressive set of pads, and uh, you know you can really test it. But I have standard street pads. Um, these are like 10 year old tires I have on this car. I'm gonna be changing them soon. So I don't have any real good hard data as far as how much shorter does this thing stop? Does it stop? Absolutely. Does it stop right now? Absolutely. Um, the, the brake dive and things like that is basically non-existent. It does a very good job of hauling this thing down at you know a considerable rate of speed. So guys, I'll put links down in the description. Uh, you know, obviously to all these parts I use on the front and the back as well as you know even the little stuff like the banjo bolts and the hoses and things like that if you guys are actually interested in replicating what i'm showing you here um, as always guys if you guys like the video hit like if you want to see more content go down and hit subscribe thanks for watching guys